Good afternoon, people of the internet, and welcome to the Monarch Journal. Question number one, can you take me seriously while I'm wearing speed shades? Question number two, what do you think of when I say the word true love? Do you think about finding it in another person? Maybe a soulmate, a partner, or a confidant, as the French like to say. I know I used to, but after I read the book, The Mastery of Love, by Don Miguel Ruiz, I began to question the values that were ingrained in me growing up. He challenges this concept with an idea he calls the magical kitchen. Let's dive in. So I want you to imagine for a second that you have a magical kitchen. And in that kitchen, you have unlimited access to food. Anything you could want. Sushi, donair, hummus, protein shakes for the boys. And with that food, you can nourish yourself, but you can also share it with whomever you want. You throw illustrious dinner parties for all your friends, family, and animals. And people love you because you share your food unconditionally. One day, while you're cooking in the kitchen, you hear a subtle knock on the door. You open the door, and there's a person with a pizza. The person looks at you and says, would you like some of my pizza? You can have some, but you have to let me control you and do as I say. Can you imagine how you'd react to this person? I mean, you already have an abundance of pizza in your kitchen, and yours is probably better. You have a stone flame grill. You politely tell the person, I don't need your pizza. I have some of my own. You can come in my kitchen and have some of my pizza, but I do not want yours, especially with those conditions. Now, let's imagine the exact opposite scenario. You're starving and you have no food, no magical kitchen. You have no money, but you need food to survive. One day, while you're twiddling your thumbs in your empty kitchen, you get a knock on the door. Who the frick could it be, you think to yourself. You go open the door and it's the person with the pizza. The person looks at you and says, would you like some of this pizza? You can have some, but you need to do as I say and let me control you. What do you think you're gonna say this time around? You need food to survive. You're probably going to accept the pizza with the conditions. After the first day, you feel somewhat full, but tomorrow you're gonna to need more pizza and the cycle will continue. After a while, you become reliant on the pizza and you become a slave to the person providing the pizza. Doubt eventually sets in and you begin to question, what if this person gives my pizza away? My pizza. You can see how this could easily spiral to a negative situation. So, I know you guys are probably thinking at this point, what's all this food talk, man? I'm getting hungry. Well. This is the point where I want you to replace the food with love. Imagine that you have a magical kitchen full of love. Not only do you love yourself unconditionally, but you love others as well. Imagine you get that same knock on the door and the person says, you can have some of my love, but you must do as I say and let me control you. Think about how you'd respond to that when you already have all of the love in your heart. The same goes for the opposite. Imagine you're starving for love and you get that same knock on the door. Chances are you may take the offer and end up in a potentially negative relationship. I feel like there's an abundance of this type of behavior in the modern world. I feel like we're taught to seek love in another person and not necessarily focus on loving ourselves first. But what is the real moral of the story? So I think what Don Miguel is really trying to say with his concept of the magical kitchen is that true love must come from within. We have an abundance of love in our hearts, but we must choose to see it. In order to properly love and receive love, we must first love ourselves. So next time you're craving a relationship or you're craving love, I think the best possible thing that you can do is focus on loving yourself. Thanks again, folks, for tuning in to the Monarch Journal. 
We'll see you on the next one.